For 11 days last April, many streets in the centre of London were blocked solid by supporters of the Extinction Rebellion campaign protesting against climate change. Now they have taken their protest to other cities, including Cardiff, Glasgow, Bristol and Leeds, as well as London again. Here's Greta Thunberg, the uh, young climate activist, addressing protesters in London in April. We have gathered here today and on many other places around London and, the, and across the world too. We have gathered today because... We have chosen which path we want to take, and now we are waiting for the others to follow our example. On this programme an hour ago, the former head of counter-terrorism at New Scotland Yard, Richard Walton, described Extinction Rebellion as a hardcore anarchist group who want to break up our democracy. I was asked by Politics Exchange to have a look at Extinction Rebellion, and I thought it would be just like any other environmentalist group. Um, sadly, after a lot of deep research, um, it's uh, very clear that they're a hardcore anarchist group um, that want to basically break up uh, our democracy. Well, Rupert Reid of Extin <coughs> excuse me, Extinction Rebellion is with me. Good morning to you. Good morning. What do you make of that? Well, I think it's a funny kind of uh, revolution that's trying to break up the state and break up democracy. If it takes a year for a top counterterrorism officer to dredge up a few quotes that he can try to paint a, a funny picture around in order to make the case. What we are is a mass movement of ordinary people of all ages and of all kinds who are coming together to stand up because we're facing an existential threat. We're facing the possible end of our civilization, and people aren't happy about that. And yeah, they want radical change. We want radical change, don't we all? Well, we want change. A lot of people want change, certainly, but it uh, depends how it's brought about. And let me quote to you what one of your uh, leading people, Roger Hallam, um, said in February of this year. We're not just sending out emails and asking for donations. We're going to force the governments to act. And if they don't, we will bring them down and create a democracy fit for purpose. And yes, some might die in the process. Well, I'd rather live on a healthy planet than die. But if we look at what happened with the suffragettes, if we look at what happened with the civil rights movement, people did die in those movements. And this movement, this struggle is even bigger than those. But you know what? If people die, it's not going to be because of us, because we are an absolutely nonviolent movement. Well, the nonviolent discipline, excuse me, mm. let me just finish that yes, point. The nonviolent discipline that we showed in April, which has been absolutely strong, is one of the key reasons why the British public swung behind us, because that's the fact that 67% of people, after the rebellion in April concluded, agreed with us that there is a climate emergency and that the government needs to act now. But that's one thing. It's a big step further beyond that to say we are going to force the governments to act, and if they don't, we'll bring them down and create a democracy fit for purpose. And yes, some might die in the process. That's an enormous step beyond what you've just said, isn't well, it? Well, Mr Walton said we want to break up democracy. I'm asking you what to comment on what Mr Hallam, your Roger Hallam, said. Look, if you go through the enormous, voluminous works of Roger Hallam, I'm sure you can dredge up one or two quotes that I might disagree with the nuances. Ah, so of, you do disagree. But that's with not it. well. I'm, I'm, I wouldn't have necessarily used those precise words myself. But what I would but, like to bring out from those words that I do strongly agree with is that what this is not about is breaking up democracy. What this is about, as Roger was saying in that quote, is creating a real democracy because everybody knows that who, our democracy, who, democracy is, is drastically is failing us. Sorry, who, whose democracy is the real? democracy? democracy. The real democracy is the democracy we want to create. If you ask you. Gandhi what he thought of British democracy, he would, I'm sure, tell you that he thinks it would be a good idea. How can it be democratic? Because there was no democracy, be in as we understand it, in India when Gandhi staged his protest because it was a colonial country. I mean, you're not surely making a comparison with this country. We have a vote in this country. It is a democracy. And you want to bring it down? Look, 67% of people say there's a climate emergency and the government needs to act now to deal with it. But that's absolutely not happening. And that's why we'll be back on the streets until it does happen. Right. And that's why our rebellion in October will be stronger and bigger than the rebellion in April. And if anyone listening to this wants to come and join us, put October the 7th in your diary. That's the date it's going to start. Right. And, and we will be back on the streets until the government acts and, and faces what, up to this terrible crisis, which doing, is going to destroy us. And doing what? What, what else apart from protesting in the streets, what else are you prepared to do? 
Well, we'll be taking action probably against financial institutions. We'll be taking What's action... What's that mean, taking action against them? What's that mean? Well, it might mean things such as blockading them. It might mean things such as having some kind of uh, debt strike. There are various debt kinds strike. of ways. Can you explain? Yes. We might be refusing to, uh, to repay uh, debts that are taken out from financial institutions that are acting completely irresponsibly because they're putting our very future at risk. And that's what this is about. Let's keep coming back to that. John, because this report, this report is trying to take aim at Extinction Rebellion and saying, oh, look what Roger Hallam said about this or right. that. But this report seems so, completely uninterested in science, completely uninterested in our children, completely uninterested in our future. And that's what this is about. This report, the only purpose of this report is to defend business as usual. And it's business as usual that is killing us. And what I'd love you to do, John, is to ask who is funding this report? Who funds policy exchange? Because that's what you didn't do when you talked to Mr. Walton earlier. The funders of policy exchange are completely non-transparent, but I bet you if we were to find out who they were, we would find out in whose interest it is to undermine LXR. For example, Mr. maybe it's the fossil companies. Well, it may be. I've no idea. But Richard Walton... Well, why didn't you find out, John? Why didn't you ask Mr Walton about that? Because I was talking to him as the former head of the counter-terrorism at New Scotland Yard, which is what yeah, his job was. Yeah, but who funds him? Who is his paymaster now? That's the real issue. And we, it, we deserve to know about that. It's not about... This isn't about the words of Roger Hallam or Gail Bradbrook. This is about who's trying to undermine Extinction Rebellion. And I think many of your listeners will agree with me that actually what we ought to be doing is getting behind a movement that is trying to save our future, not throwing barbs at it. A movement that is prepared to break the law. Well, absolutely we're prepared to break the law. We're a rebellion. The clue's in the name, because how can a government be fully legitimate that is putting us on a path, a, so, a, a serene path, if you see what I mean, to destruction? They're serenely taking us down the road to mass destruction. And you, want to, and, you want the, to, and you want to bring down capitalism. That's, that's what your tweet in April said. We... Uh, this, this movement is the best chance we have of bringing down capitalism. I mean, you are aware that, that capitalism uh, has produced some of the, uh, uh, the wealth in this country that has enabled people to have a decent life. And you, you are aware of what capitalism does. Look, John, I think that everybody knows that our current system is failing, and that's what we're asking. We're asking people to stop and take a look at our system and be ready to reassess it. Because if we don't do that and fast, then we're in dire trouble. And Tony Gutierrez, the Secretary General of the UN, says we've got not 10 years, but two years to start seriously acting if we're to get this crisis back uh, in, a, in some kind of tenable state. And, uh, in and that was last year that he said that. So mm -hmm. we've got one year left to start acting seriously. Right. That's why we'll be back on the streets. That's why we're willing to break the law. Yes, that's why 1,100 people got arrested and transformed consciousness around this issue in this country for the better. And that's what's and giving just, some just, of us some real hope for the future. And just a final thought then. Um, you want our GDP to stop rising, drop the rise in GDP. It is nothing to be proud of before or after we cause our civilization to collapse. So, in other words, you want there to be a, a, a permanent state of recession in this country. That, that, that is your position, is it? Look, on the one hand, we've got business as usual, which is what this report, and Mr. Walton, right, yeah, are arguing so, for. So what you want, you want a recession. That, that's, that's what you're arguing for. The, the, it's a straightforward question. The, the, the alternatives are this. On the one hand, business as usual and climate breakdown and mass death. On the other hand, we reassess and try to find a way of going forward together so that we can actually live and prosper together. I, don't, I don't, really don't think that's too much to ask. I really don't think that's remotely right. extreme. I just think that's common sense. Rupert Reed, many thanks. It's six.